Okay, in this video we're going to look at spherical coordinates, derive their relationship to rectangular coordinates, and then also um, look at their applications to some triple integrals. So let's see how we can define a point in 3 space via spherical coordinates. So we've got a point up here which is defined as x, y, z and rectangular coordinates. So that means it's x units along this x-axis and I know I'm reusing x uh, and y and z more than once but that's uh, sort of okay. And then it's y units along this axis, z units along this axis. So that's the rectangular way to describe this point. Another way we can describe it is as follows. It is row units from the origin and then if we project it down to the xy plane, the angle that it makes with the xy plane is angle theta. And then finally, if we measure its angle from the positive z axis, we get an angle of phi. Okay, so let's go ahead and write the summary up here. So here, rho is going to be the distance from the origin, in other words, the point zero, zero, zero. And now let's go ahead and notice that it really only makes sense to deal with row values that are bigger than or equal to zero. Can we make meaning of negative row values? We can, but then we get like a non-unique representation of a point. And for the most part, we'll only need to uh, deal with row values that are bigger than or equal to zero. Okay, so next is theta, and that is going to be the angle between the projected point and so projected onto the xy plane, in other words the point x, y, zero and the positive x axis. Okay, so this is like a polar coordinate and uh, as such, this value theta should take values between 0 and 2 pi. And we might as well not include 2 pi because that's the same thing as 0. That's like going around this circle in the xy plane uh, full time. Great. And then phi is the angle um, uh, measured from the positive z axis. And I should say exactly what angles are we measuring here? We're measuring the angle between the positive z axis and the ray that is defined by this point and the origin. And then down here we're defining the angle between the positive x axis and the ray from the origin to this projected point, just as usual. Great. And then here, let's see what are uh, the possible values of phi. So notice phi equals zero is the positive z-axis. And then 180 degrees, in other words, pi, would be the negative z-axis. And that's all we need. So we'll have zero as uh, less than or equal to phi, which is less than or equal to pi. Okay, great. So now let's get started with building a relationship between x, y, z, and rho, theta, and phi. So the first thing to notice is that since rho is the distance from the origin, we can very easily say that x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals rho squared, just using the distance formula. But now notice that that tells us that rho is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. And as we'll see when we do integrals involving spherical coordinates, um, many times they include values like that. And so that's uh, simplified a lot by just replacing that with rho. Okay, great. Now, what can we do about theta and phi? Well, maybe in order to figure out what's going on with theta, we'll look at this projected point in the xy plane and this complementary value r. Okay, so now if we look at this value r, we can see that um, x equals r cosine theta and y equals r sine theta just from polar coordinates. And then another thing that we probably want to do is complete a triangle that involves phi, and we're going to complete it in the following way. So I'll complete it at the top here, 
And so that's just bringing this point right to the top. And so that makes uh, this distance also R. Great. Um, but now we can take the sine and the cosine of this angle and we'll be able to determine um, Z and X and Y. So notice that the height of this is Z. Great. So if we take the cosine of this angle, we have adjacent divided by hypotenuse, which is rho. So we have Z over rho. So notice that uh, cosine of phi is equal to Z over rho. And so that tells us that Z equals rho times cosine of phi. Okay, so this is actually the first rectangular coordinate that we get completely determined in terms of uh, spherical coordinates. Now let's go ahead and take the sine of phi. And notice the sine of phi is going to be um, opposite over hypotenuse. So that's going to be r over rho. So r over rho. So what that tells us is that r equals uh, sine of, sorry, rho times sine of phi. Okay, good. But what that allows us to do is to replace uh, r in each of these equations by rho sine phi. So that's going to give us x equals, so we're going to get rho um, cosine theta sine phi. So that's the order that I'll put it in. And then we're going to get y equals rho sine theta sine phi. Okay, great. So now that we've got all of our rectangular coordinates expressed in terms of polar coordinates, I'm going to go ahead and clean up the board, put that all over here, and then we'll do some integrals. Okay, so now we've got our change of variables all worked out. So we have x equals rho cosine theta sine phi, y equals rho sine theta sine phi, and z equals rho cosine phi. And then if you want to go in the other direction, you can do it like this. So rho equals the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Um, tangent theta equals y over x. So in other words, theta is the inverse tangent of y over x. Cosine phi is z over the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. In other words, phi is the inverse cosine of this term. And another thing which I'm not going to prove in this video, because we're going to hold off to when we do a more general change of variables formula for multiple integration, and we'll get something like this for free, and that is if we're doing a triple integral over a region E, which can be expressed nicely via spherical coordinates, then that's going to turn into an iterated integral. I've left the bounds of integration off here because uh, they're general. We don't know them in this case instead of just kind of uh, making up letters for them like alpha and beta. I thought it's cleaner to do this. And then we have our function f. And notice our function f, all the places where you see x, y, and z, you'll replace them with these functions. So I haven't written that down, but that's kind of obvious. And then our dv component, that's the most important thing here. Our dv component becomes rho squared times sine phi d rho d phi d theta. And why that happens, well that's what we're going to save for doing this more generally with a change of variables and multiples in, multiple integrals and then this will come for free. Okay, good. So now our goal here is to find the volume of the region bound by the cone, z equals x squared plus y squared and the sphere, x squared plus y squared equals nine. So let's go ahead and get a picture of this so we can nicely describe it in terms of spherical coordinates. Okay. So how do I like to figure out this, uh, what this surface looks like? Again, like I like to with a lot of these, I like to cover up one of the variables and think about what that would be as a plane curve. So if we cover up y squared, I get z equals the square root of x squared, which is the absolute value of x. And then further, if I cover up x squared, I get the absolute value of y. And then if I set z equal to a number, those things are opening like circles. So that means this cone can be described, well, it's just a cone. That's how we know it's a cone.
So we've got something like that. So that's going to be this surface. And then the sphere, x squared plus y squared plus z squared, so that's kind of obviously a sphere of radius 3, so I'll draw that in here like this. Great. And now notice, these are going to intersect right here. Great. And so, uh, what we're looking for is the volume of this thing, which I'm going to write in red, which is like uh, an ice cream cone or something. Okay, so now let's see if we can figure out what our uh, rho, theta, and phi values need to be. So notice, if we're inside this solid region, which I've given in red, so let's say we're at this point right here in the solid region, I am between zero units from the origin and three units from the origin, because we know up here this sphere is given by the equation rho equals 3. Okay, good. So that tells me that my rho values are going to trend between 0 and 3. Okay, now what about my theta values? Well, this is the entire ice cream cone all the way around, so my theta values are going to run from 0 to 2 pi. Good. Now what about my phi values? So let's recall that I measure phi from the positive x-axis, sorry, positive z-axis. So notice our region includes the angle phi equals zero, and then how far does it go? It goes out to this cone. So let's go ahead and figure out the phi value for this cone. So notice we're given by z equals x squared plus y squared. So that means we can take cosine of phi and we'll know that. So cosine of phi along this cone, I should say. So that's going to be the square root of x squared plus y squared because we know that that's what z is on this cone cone divided by the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared, but notice z squared is the square root of x squared plus y squared. Sorry, z is that, so z squared is x squared plus y squared, so we have another x squared plus y squared. So we've got something like that going on. But notice that's going to give us the square root of x squared plus y squared over 2x squared plus 2y squared, or in other words, 1 over the square root of 2. Okay, now if cosine of phi is equal to 1 over the square root of 2, that makes phi equal to pi over 4. So that tells us that our upper bound is going to be just pi over 4. Okay, good. So now we can go ahead and take the volume of this region. So the volume of this region is going to be the integral over this region, dv. Great. Which we're going to put this into spherical coordinates. So um, let's do it in the same order as this. So we'll have 0 to 2 pi and then 0 to pi by 4, and then 0 to 3. So that's our outermost integral is theta, and then we have phi, and then we have rho. And now we're going to have our function f, but now notice our function f is just the constant function 1. So now I'll just do rho squared uh, sine uh, phi d rho d phi d theta. Okay, good. So that's the integral that we're going to need to calculate. So I'm going to erase my picture and everything and then just we'll just get ready to calculate that integral. Okay, cleaned up the board and now we've got our volume is this iterated integral that we wrote down before. So we've got a theta integral between 0 and 2 pi, a phi integral between 0 and pi by 4, a rho integral between 0 and 3. Now the next thing we want to do is notice that the function that we are integrating is a function of rho times a function of phi times a trivial function which is just the constant function 1 times theta. So that means that we can split this up into three integrals. 
So we can split this up into the integral 0 to 2 pi d theta times the integral 0 to pi over 4 sine of phi d phi, and then finally fa times the integral 0 to 3 of rho squared d rho. So we've got two kind of end of calculus 1 integrals. So let's see what we've got here. So this is just going to give us 2 pi. And now we have the antiderivative of cosine phi is negative, uh, sorry, of sine phi is negative cosine phi. We need to evaluate that from 0 to pi over 4. And then the antiderivative of that thing is going to be rho cubed over 3. We need to evaluate that from 0 to 3. Okay, so now we're pretty much good to go. So notice this is going to give us 2 pi. And then uh, what I'm going to do is turn this minus sign into a plus sign and then change the order of our evaluation like that. And that's going to give me 1 minus the square root of 2 over 2 because cosine of 0 is 1 and cosine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. And then finally we have 3 cubed, which is 27 over 3, which is 9. So that gives us a 9 there. So in the end, maybe we could put this together. We would get 18 pi. And then maybe we could write this as 2 over 2. So we have 2 minus root 2 over 2. Okay? And then finally, we can take that 2 and cancel it out. So we get 9 pi times 2 minus root 2. And that's a nice final answer, I would say. Okay, so this is the end of the video.